Good morning, Chairman Wyden, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to appear at this morning's forum. I think that was a great segue for my remarks, uh, because we are experiencing some of the very issues that you speak of. My name is Gordon Van Whaley. I'm the President and Chief uh, Executive Officer of ISA New England, uh, and we take care of grid operations in the six New England states. Today, I plan to highlight the serious operational challenges facing New England's power system following a major shift uh, that has occurred in the region's generation mix. In the past decade, natural gas has become the predominant fuel used to produce electricity in New England, moving away from a diverse source, uh, a set of sources to a system where more than half of the region's electricity is produced using natural gas. However, as our demand for gas has increased, the region has not seen a corresponding growth in natural gas infrastructure to meet that demand. Electricity supply and demand must be balanced on an instantaneous basis, and problems on the electric system require immediate action by the grid operator, often through the operation of fast responding gas units. However, if gas generators have not made secure arrangements for their fuel prior to the electric operating day, gas pipelines may not be able to respond to the real-time demands of the electric system. We've seen these issues play out in the past, and we saw them again this past winter, where generators could not access gas in short notice, particularly during inclement weather periods. Tell us a little bit more about the problems you had this winter, because I think the problems you had this winter really highlight what the transmission debate is all about. That's right. So the basic problem is in insufficient pipeline infrastructure carrying gas into the region. Uh, we didn't have a particularly cold winter this, this winter. We had a couple of days that were huge problems, and that's when things that's really right. got so out of We had a period at the end of January where right. we had some cold weather, and then we had a blizzard that came through in the first, end of the first week of February. And in multiple instances, we found situations where generators essentially couldn't access fuel. In the case of the blizzard, we had that compounded by the problem that we had a lot of non-gas fired generation knocked off the system due to the storm. And we were very close to the edge uh, of reliability um, in, in, in very poor weather circumstances. So, of course, as a system operator, that makes us very nervous, and we want to solve that problem as quickly as we possibly can. Um, so it really comes down to increasing the levels of fuel availability within the region, either through more gas pipeline uh, that needs to be built, gas storage, or having gas generators build dual fuel capability. And we believe that these... Uh, Fuel arrangements need to be incentivized through our wholesale market design because that's our tool for actually making them change their behavior. We can't access the full benefit of the domestic um, shale gas deposits in the Marcellus because of these pipeline constraints re leading from the west to the south. Our pipeline system is actually underutilized a bit from the north, but the commodity is more expensive up there. And just to sort of give you a sense of this, even though we didn't experience record or sustained cold temperatures, we saw price spikes in north of $30 per million BDU, and the rest of the country was uh, being able to procure gas in the 3 to $4 range. So that just gives you a sense of how extreme the shortage conditions were up in New England. And quite frankly, until new pipeline capacity is built, I think we're going to continue to see these price spikes. So you, you would see, absent any action, again, possibly legislation, possibly not, you would see repeats of what happened this winter in New England. That's right. I think we're going to be in this space for several more years because um, there are some new pipelines being considered, but they're unlikely to be in operation much before 2017. So uh, the thing that also troubles me is that one of the ways we get through this situation is producing energy through oil generation. And the oil generators, just to give you a sense, whereas a decade ago produced 22% of the energy in our system last year, because of low nat natural gas prices, produced less than 1%. And uh, our view is that these oil generators, because they're older uh, and less efficient, are going to retire. And so we're going to be facing a set of circumstances where the gas pipeline is going to become ever more constrained because demand for gas keeps growing, and the oil generators are, gra a, are going to retire during the same time frame. So we have some really serious operational issues to deal with. And we need to get at that problem by changing the incentives in the wholesale market design. Because really, we don't think it's acceptable that when we sign up generators to produce electricity that they can't do it for us when we most need them to do it. So we're addressing these issues with a sense of urgency. and we, we We're working with our stakeholders in the New England states uh, to put together a package of different changes to our market rules, culminating in um, a, a big change to something we call our forward capacity market. We'll be filing that at the FERC. And so if 
fairly soon, uh, Mr. Wright and his colleagues are going to have uh, this on their desk to deal with. So thank you very much for your uh, time this morning.